Hi everyone, my name is Natalia. Uh, I am a singer songwriter originally from Ukraine and uh, currently I live uh, in um, California, Orange County, Newport Beach. And he, uh, here's my story about my uh, music journey. Uh, I was born uh, in Ukraine in a very musical family. In my family, everybody sang and played instruments, uh, starting from my grandmothers. Uh, my grandmothers uh, had really powerful, beautiful voices, and uh, typically during the family gatherings or holidays, um, there would be a huge table, and the whole family would be there. And my grandmothers and my parents, aunts, uncles would sing folk Ukrainian songs, all in harmony. So, um, I grew up in a very musical atmosphere. My parents, uh, my dad, uh, started um, uh, playing different instruments when he was uh, still in school. And he was already gigging at the age of probably 14 at like local events and the weddings. Um, he taught himself to play different instruments, trumpets, guitars, uh, bass guitar. My mom, she was a singer and uh, she also um, did costume designs for herself. So she was very creative with singing, uh, costumes, theater, stuff like that. And um, when my parents got married, uh, they were very young, they were um, uh, just about 20 years old. Um, my dad uh, served in the military and my mom was a military nurse. Uh, so we lived kind of like in a very secluded military base area. Uh, but um, my parents also, after work, played um, instruments in the band, in the military band. And um, so typically after work, when they would come home, I was the first child. They would always uh, rehearse or play music at home. Also, they really were melomans and loved uh, different music, uh, collected uh, cassettes and uh, music records. And at home, they would listen to them and uh, record lyrics, um, uh, just like on a piece of paper from the favorite songs. So, um, since I was born, I was exposed to listening to the best songs from Russian uh, stars, Ukrainian stars, also English and American uh, bands and artists. So singing lots of songs at home with my parents. My first performance happened uh, when I was three years old. That was a concert on a military base with lots of um, people in the audience. Uh, my dad played the guitar and I sang a song about a little rain uh, with a microphone. That was amazing. Um, I love that. And after that, um, I sang a lot in the kindergarten, um, just performing. And my favorite toy at home was my tape recorder, where I just um, I could take the whole day just switching the tape recorder from one side to another side and just playing my um, favorite songs and uh, I typically took a deodorant or a hairbrush imagining that that's my microphone and I would look in the mirror and um, perform and imagine myself being a star and later on when I was six years old um, I started studying in a music school piano department uh, it was a classical music school and we had, uh, we had different subjects. One of them was like performing uh, musical pieces by Beethoven, Bach, Chopin, Mozart, um, you name it. <laughs> uh, then we had solfeggio where we would have to learn the theory about the chords and um, um, all, all the music theory, composition. I hated it at first. Uh, I must tell you the truth, it was not fun because we had always lots of homework. Um, but right now I'm happy that I did that. Um, we also had music literature where we learned about different composers from different um, years and analyzed those and kind of like 
learns to analyze how the composition was made and uh, what was the emotion behind um, every uh, piece and what different instruments represented when it comes to like emotion or nature or um, just um, general situations. And we had choir uh, and we sang also popular choir pieces. I was a soprano in a choir. Uh, but besides music school, I also went to the training for stage vocals and that was um, to train me to sing solo with a microphone on a big stage. I learned dancing, how to move uh, when I sing a song with a microphone. I learned uh, how to uh, act a song out, how to show emotions, all that good stuff. So I pretty much did not really care about my regular um, school. I cared more about my music school and about, and about my stage training. Uh, we had concerts um, every, every month. We had concerts, rehearsals, going to big uh, stage, doing the sound check a couple of days before the concert, making sure that um, I can uh, feel the stage, uh, I see the distance of the stage, that I, I hear myself um, when I sing, because typically those um, stages were uh, with um, um, like a couple of thousands of people in the audience. And we had also competitions and uh, um, some of the competitions were nationwide competitions. I think what threw me off in the music business is uh, when I was 12 years old, I was uh, um, singing in a Nash, Ukrainian national competition and I was supposed to get an award, the first award or Grand Prix, which is like the best award for the competition. I performed really well and um, my coach called me and said that I'm gonna um, sing um, in the final um, concert for winners uh, because I was having the first award and then a couple of hours uh, right before the concert uh, she called me and said that my award was sold to a student of a uh, jury had and uh, that I was not getting anything and that's when I realized how corrupt uh, things can be and that money sometimes can buy things. My parents, they really did not have lots of money. So um, I was really upset because of that and I decided that I'm, I'm not gonna do music at all because it's corrupt. But eventually, um, a couple of months later, I joined uh, the church, which was the World of Life Church, a global movement. And um, they offered me to do the worship music for them, to play the keyboards and sing and to lead the youth worship. And I was totally stoked. Um, for the next five years, I only did worship music and concentrated on um, that topic. I did not really um, think anything about uh, secular music, or general pop music. And uh, on the top of that, I had a couple of producers who approached me, uh, offering me to help me with my music, but then eventually uh, I was sexually assaulted. Um, uh, luckily, nothing bad happened, but there was a um, approach for um, sexual payment for their services, their help. And uh, I did not want any of that. I broke every connection with those producers. But um, that was one of the other things that really threw me off um, pursuing the music career in Ukraine. So the next big step in my music career was um, after I finished uh, my degree in Kiev National Linguistic University for the um, interpreter's career, I had a chance to go to Germany and live there for a year um, doing linguistics and languages. Uh, I joined um, jazz big band and that was the period in my life when I really got into jazz. 
and uh, learning about Ella Fitzgerald um, and all of the history of jazz, singing jazz songs with amazing mus musicians was such a big milestone in my um, music development. So I really enjoyed that. And um, after Germany, I came to the United States of America and started learning about music business and uh, uh, what uh, labels are looking for. And I understood that um, besides having a good voice, uh, it would be really good to start learning um, songwriting and um, having my original music, not just the covers. And uh, I started learning how to write songs in English because English is not my foreign language and I still had accent back then. And I do have a little bit of an accent right now, but not as bad as when I just came to United States. So I started learning songwriting and uh, when I moved to California in 2012, I was um, super blessed to get uh, connected with amazing musicians in Los Angeles and San Diego and Orange County. And um, shortly enough, I got acquainted to uh, Jay Styles, um, who was from, from the uh, Black Street Band, Teddy Riley's Black, uh, Black Street Band. And he helped me um, with my first release of my EP, Don't Lead Me On. So that was my original um, original music. It uh, it consisted of four songs and uh, a very nice uh, official video. So um, thank you so much, Jay Styles. He um, he is really well known in the um, black uh, community with the band Black Street and Teddy Riley, who was the producer, former producer of. Um, Michael Jackson's album. So that's like a blessing from above um, to release an EP with uh, Jay Styles being as one of my producers and songwriters. Um, after that release, I was super lucky to meet another producer, Matthew Ferry, who was in touch with the trans label of Marcus Schultz called Harbor Recordings. And uh, together with him and with uh, Marcus Schultz and the label, um, we wrote and released uh, and uh, made a video, a very professional, nice video in Miami um, for one of the songs that I wrote, uh, Breathing Again. And uh, Dave Naven uh, is one of the producers uh, from the Marcus, Sch uh, Marcus Schultz's team who made a track for the song. and. Um, I was lucky to have that track released on the Armin uh, Van Buren uh, radio show, A State of Trance. And uh, I had a couple of other producers who took the song and uh, remixed it. So that was unbelievable, amazing. So if you type in the Google Dave Naven featuring Natalia Breathing Again, you will see the video. So that was super cool and I was super blessed with that. Get ready for some serious uplifting in this hour.